so ten, so ten years ago, you, you mentioned AWS. So that your Amazon has changed so much in ten years. Ten years ago, you were barely in cloud computing. Yeah. Certainly not. We doing, just started in cloud. Just computing started 10 it. Years certainly ago. not. Doing Another it. overnight success. I've noticed all overnight successes take about ten years. That's the right. That's the right amount yeah. of time, probably. So we're five years away as a. Yeah, you start something yeah. and just start yeah. the clock. Any any year now. Um, so Amazon's changed so much over over that period of time. Can you preview or predict maybe what Amazon's going to look like 10 years from now? Well, um, that's a very good question. I think on the outside, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the observable Amazon could change quite a bit. Just as you said, there, you know, 10 years ago, you wouldn't think that AWS would be such a significant uh, uh, contributor to the business. And there could be more things like that in a kind of 10-year time frame that we don't know about. Um, the one thing I hope will not change, of course, is that approach that I outlined at the beginning. You know, the customer obsession, the willingness to invent, the patience, letting things develop, uh, uh, accepting failure um, as a path to getting success. Um, by the way, one thing I should point out about failure, and this is a fine point, internally we take it, uh, we know it, and we don't need to talk about it much, but there's a different kind of failure which is not what you want. That's where you have operating history and you do know what you're doing and you just screw it up. So that's not a good failure. That's not an experiment. That's just bad operations, operational excellence. And so like if we're, we've opened 130 fulfillment centers, we're on generation eight of our fulfillment center technology. If we open a new fulfillment center and just woof it, you know, we have to do some internal examination. That's not an experiment. That's just bad execution. So there's different kinds of failure and you need to make sure you're making the right kind of failure. The right kind of failure should be an invention. It should be something that, you know, it's an experiment. You don't know if it's gonna work and you know up front that you don't know if it's gonna work. That shouldn't be opening a new fulfillment center for us. I'm not sure I answered your question. I got distracted by failure. Um, it's okay. I've lived so comfortably with failure for so long that I, you know, I revert there on a dime, you know. It's an, it's an important distinction though between the two. It is. Yeah. So, oh, but the, the yeah. things that will stay the same over 10 years, the, hopefully the approach will stay the same. And then the other thing I would advise any entrepreneur or large business or large organization, um, you know, like a government organization, is you, you need to identify your big ideas. And there should only be two or three of them. And then if a senior leader, the, the main job of a senior leader is to identify two or three important ideas and then to enforce great execution against those big ideas. And the good news is that the big ideas are usually incredibly easy to identify. You shouldn't need to think about them very much. You already know what they are. Let me give you an example. For Amazon, the consumer business, um, the three big ideas are low prices, fast delivery, and vast selection. You don't need you know, it's not the kind, in, in the, way, the, the way you know that they're the big ideas is because they're so obvious. The big ideas should be obvious. And by the way, it's very hard to maintain a firm grasp of the obvious at all times. So little things can distract you from the obvious. But you have to back up and say, these are the three big ideas. How do we always deliver things a little faster? How do we always reduce our cost structure so that we can have prices that are a little lower? And the good thing about these big ideas is they will be stable in time. So I know for a fact that 10 years from now, customers are still gonna like low prices. No matter what happens with technology and everything else, no matter what happens, people are gonna like faster delivery. It is impossible for me to imagine a scenario where 10 years from now, a customer comes to me and says, Jeff, I love Amazon. I just wish you delivered a little more slowly. <laughs> this is so inconceivable that you, have, you can have great conviction as a leader to continue to put energy into driving speed of delivery. And whatever you're, you know, in AWS, I know that customers, they like low prices, they like availability, they don't want the services to be down, they like data security. It's not very hard to figure out what the big ideas are, and then you can keep putting energy into those things, and you spin up those flywheels, and they'll still be paying you dividends 10 years from now. And what I'm saying, I'm putting it in kind of a business context, but for those of you who are, are in government, these principles would apply identically identically to a government organization. You should figure out what the big ideas are, 
and just spin up flywheels. Get those things rolling. Make sure that you've picked things that'll still be true 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Quite the same.